Hello everyone, we're back here at the left rear wheel well of the Silver Bullet. This is our first video in quite a long time because since the last one we moved and built a new shop and various other things have happened and it all took much longer than planned or expected. So we're back on the 10RAE project trying to get that going and uh, making a lot of progress. We're hoping to release it by the end of this quarter. So. As I'm developing the shift learner and everything, um, another project that was much deferred has come up. Um, I had great plans for the suspension on this car, but they kept getting deferred due to the move and everything else and product priorities. So, one of this rear airbag started leaking. So, that's forced us to do what we've always wanted to do and never got around to doing. So, we're doing a complete suspension overhaul on this car new airbags we've actually we're upgrading to the limousine airbags which are heavier duty and the rear axle is actually in my buddy's shop right now he's putting a power tracks in it this car had an open 327 from the factory it has a 327 because it had the handling package which gives you originally the smaller converter the 470w and a few other little things but one of them was the uh, 327 axle ratio, but unfortunately no limited slip. So we're going to rectify that problem because the car has zero traction right now. The Medco arm should help too. We've got big tires on the back. So with the uh, power tracks differential, which is similar to a uh, true track, we're going to hopefully be able to stick the car better. So he's working on that. We're going through and replacing the airbags and um, just taking care of things here and here's our drive shaft kind of hanging from bailing wire right now because I was too lazy to unbolt it from the transmission. Um, this is actually a 2006 to, two, to 2010 uh, Ford Explorer V8 two-wheel drive drive shaft for those of you keeping a score at home. It actually bolted into this car without any modifications in length as is. So. It actually still has the original U-joints, but I might replace them while I've got everything apart. But that's basically where we're at. We're making really good progress on the firmware and the tables and the base tune for the 10R80. And we should have that going and the 10L80 later this year. Um, and we're developing our tuning tools and improving our self-tuning algorithms so that the product will work even better than it does including the quick six for the 6R80. And uh, we are also um, making a toolkit that will make it easier to add new transmissions because we plan on adding the 6L80, 6L90, 6R140, and eventually the Chrysler 8-speed, which we think is a really good target. So we're hoping to start getting work to work on some of those later this year. So a while back, we upgraded our wheels and tires. Um, they're dirty. <laughs> but we've got a 295 4018 on the back of the car, which is about the biggest thing you can fit in a Panther wheel well. That helped traction somewhat, but with a 4.7 to 1 first gear in the 10R80, uh, we still didn't have any traction without a limited slip, obviously. So that is one of the things that was deferred and needed to happen. Another interesting thing too, when you've got a 20 year old car with um, 130,000 miles on it, things wear out. These are the upper control arms from the, the rear of the car and they're absolutely, the bushings are completely shot. So 130,000 miles, the airbags are pretty much shot. That's actually the one that was still holding here. Um, rear shock absorbers equally shot and those are the original rotors that the car left the factory with so they were they're scrapped they're well worn um, the original rear sway bar it had one but it's pretty small so that's not ideal but we've got another one coming um, and with the original Watts link set up which we're replacing with the Metco Watts link and uh, that is actually a Marauder steering rack. So we're upgrading to the Marauder rack. The Marauder had the quickest steering rack of all the 03 Up Panthers, the 
O2 and down are a regular conventional recirculating ball steering box, but O3 up have rack and pinion as well as nice A-arm suspension. Um, and that is the quickest one you can get. They're a little hard to find, but they're out there. Um, so that'll improve the, the handling of the car and the steering and make it a little bit easier in autocross too. So here's our new airbags. These are actually pretty nice. They're uh, made by Arnott, I believe that's how you pronounce the company name. Uh, they're good quality. They're actually made by Continental, I believe. And these are the limousine airbags. They're actually a little bit heavier, stronger, a little bit higher spring rate because they, they have more area. The pistons are what determines the rate of the airbag, so it's a little bit bigger. So the, that'll go well with our front suspension. We have the uh, Ride Tech coilover system that we purchased from our friend Chris at D ADTR. Chris is pretty much the authority on Panther body stuff, so if you need anything for a Panther car, uh, ADTR.net. That's ADTR.net. He's got the best selection of everything that you can find for these cars. And he uh, furnished us with the Ride Tech uh, coilover system. These are the rear shocks. They'll go with our airbags since we're retaining the airbags. These are the front coilover shocks. And these are the springs. So 650 pound springs in the front. And the airbags are a little bit higher than the original ones. They're Probably the equivalent of like a 150 or so, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, and then this is the uh, Metco Watson setup. It's a really nice piece. This is actually made not far from here in Anderson, South Carolina. So we know those guys and they do, they do nice work. It also has the slot for the sensor for the air suspension so you don't lose that with their setup. This is the Metco upper control arm. It looks a lot better than the one we showed you a minute ago. We're upgrading the Willwood 14 inch super light brakes. We've got enough room in our wheels, but if you have 18 inch wheels and are running those brakes or even 19s, make sure they'll clear because they have some very unique clearance requirements. But uh, thankfully we were able to use them. So we're running those, it's the calipers and the rotors, and the hub adapters. Very much looking forward to that system. It's going to be nice and we've got the stainless steel brake lines to go with it. Those seem to make a big difference in pedal feel from my past experience. Um, yeah, and other than that, we're freshening everything up. We're wheel bearing hubs, probably not in great shape. Um, rear sway bar links, um, factory OEM front sway bar links, which are necessary with Chris's uh, Sway bars, which are actually made by iBox. They're looking forward to getting those. That's the only thing we're waiting on to finish the project. And of course, I'm not sure if I've shown this yet, but we have a box full of Moog, or Moog suspension parts, depending who you ask. The whole entire front end is pretty much worn out and needs to be replenished. The, the boots and the ball joints have been missing for about five years now, so they're probably shot and um, everything else bushings and the control arms and the uh, tie rod ends were freshening all that so it'll, it'll drive like or actually better than a new car so it should should be pretty fun to drive actually when we're done so looking forward to that part we're just waiting on a few more items and we'll get everything put back together and we'll have an update as we get the car put back together um, we'll also keep you posted on our progress with the 10R80 transmission and the updates and modifications to our controller, we're making really good, good headway with that. So looking forward to uh, keeping you abreast of those details. Anyway, thank you for watching our channel and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you.